think that um, encouraging companies to be more responsible in broad terms in their normal everyday business conduct is a means of drawing companies into our more public, uh, our public sector, our publicly oriented goals um, in a more holistic way than if, the, that it, than if it was only the public sector who tried to address alone some of these social and environmental challenges which uh, we, we know is, is unsustainable. So drawing companies in um, into those challenges is a means of broadening um, the community involved in looking at those challenges. And then also we feel that uh, corporate social responsibility is a chance of new opportunities for companies because um, we, uh, we see profit-seeking, of course, uh, as being um, the, um, the, the nature of uh, a company's aims and activities, but we would see that if they incorporate CSR um, uh, thoughts and values into their business operations, then that can complement their profit-seeking objectives. It doesn't mean that the one is exclusive to the other. We do think that CSR activities can be very compatible and even um, enhancing the profit-seeking motive of companies. And it is about trusting companies as well. If consumers trust the companies, trust the products and processes that certain companies make um, because maybe they offer quality uh, linked to a CSR agenda, then um, this, this, uh, this can be good for companies and could be, it can be good for, um, for consumers. And um, a new communication is in the interests of society. Um, uh, we have broadly at the European level our Europe 2020 agenda, which you're probably familiar with, which, which is a combination of the environmental, the economic and the social. Um, it's also relevant for public services, and we've touched on some of that today, um, and particularly some of your, relating to some of your, your housing providers who are either publicly funded or are wholly, um, wholly funded from the public and private funded, mm -hmm. uh, a share or totally publicly funded. Mm -hmm. It's also about employment issues and some of the issues you've been talking about this morning um, in relation, I noticed earlier uh, in, the, in the film um, where, um, where, where housing associations or housing companies employ, have employees such as cleaners for instance and making sure that that they are adequately equipped and, and uh, that um, um, uh, all sorts of health and safety uh, uh, requirements and even above the law are taken account of to make sure that employees are properly dealt with. You know, if, you, if you're going to be um, a responsible company, then that does mean uh, centralising corporate social responsibility at the centre of a company's activities. Mm -hmm. And this is where ethics and value, values play a part. Uh, and that should be imbued in, in all the enterprise's activities, which means, as I say, in my view, taking account of these broader, broader societal aspects around affordable housing. When, uh, when social housing is built, the, the um, contractors who are doing, undertaking the construction, doing the building, you know, maybe they need to pay attention to the fact that if they are importing stone from India or something, that then they need to pay attention uh, as part of their corporate social responsibility down their supply chains in the international context. They need to pay attention to uh, forced labour or child labour or uh, paying a living wage, making sure that, uh, that employees in the, in the developing country, the relevant country, have access to a trade union. Um, all these uh, associated labour and human rights for a large company, such as some of the construction companies that exist in the European Union, that, that sort of corporate resp social responsibility needs to be in place. Um.